This video demonstrates a method for calculating complex corporate finance problems. I'm your professor, Dr. Stephen Haggard. So many times when students see a question like this one, they panic. It's because they are looking for the exact things to plug into the formula, but often those are not provided for us. Instead, what we're provided is the information we can use then to calculate the things that we need. And so what I would recommend to you is to always start at the end. In this case, we are asked, what is the IGR? Well, the internal growth rate is the rate at which the firm can grow on internal equity alone. And this is the formula. Okay, notice that we have to have return on assets. And then something people are less familiar with is B. B is the retention ratio or the plowback ratio. When a firm has net income, that net income can go to one of two places. Either it goes to pay dividends or it goes into the retained earnings of the firm. And this B just represents the proportion of net income that goes into retained earnings. So let's talk about what these things mean and how we can get to them. Well, first of all, we are not given B, we are given the dividend payout ratio of 20%. And here's what you need to know. B is equal to one minus that dividend payout ratio. And so in this case, B is going to be 0 0.8. So we already have B. Now we only need to find ROA. Well, we know that ROA is equal to net income divided by total assets. Let's go back and read through the problem and see if we've been given either one of those. Guano Dons has a total asset turnover of 2.5, a profit margin of 6.5%, a total debt ratio of 0 0.375, and then the dividend payout ratio. I don't see net income or total assets either one there. But if we think back to our DuPont identity, we know that the first two things in that are profit margin and total asset turnover. And we are given profit margin. And we are not given total asset turnover, but we can figure, oh yes we are, there it is. Uh, so why does that work? Well. Profit margin is net income divided by sales. And total asset turnover is sales over total assets. And the sales just cancel out. And so all we have to do is take the profit margin times total asset turnover, and we'll have our ROA. Profit margin here is 0.065. Uh, we're going to do decimals. Anytime you use a, a proportion like this, always use the decimal in a calculation. Do not use the percentage. Okay, so 0 0.065 times the total asset turnover of 2.5. So we can get our calculator out. 2.5 times 0 0.065 equals, I get 0 0.1625. So now we have everything we need in order to solve this problem. IGR is equal to 0 0.1625 times 0 0.8 divided by 1 minus 0 0.1625 times 0 0.8. Now I want you to notice something here. This thing here is exactly the same as the numerator. 
There's no need for us to type this stuff in. Let's show you the easy and lazy way to do this. I've still got this number in here from my ROA, so I'm just gonna say times 0.8 equals, and that's equal to 0.13. So I'm going to store one. And now I'm going to say divide by open parentheses one minus recall one equal. And that way I don't have to worry about typing things in over and over again. I don't have to worry about rounding errors and things like that. And so we're getting 0 0.1494 or 14.94 percent. Now let's go through one more time what we did. We started with the question. We wrote down the formula for the thing being sought by the uh, question and we looked at what are the things we need to solve that and then we went about trying to find these things one at a time by digging through this pile here. Now, by the way, sometimes you are given more information than you need. For example, on this problem, we're given the total debt ratio, and we didn't need that at all. And so students will work and work and work and try to figure out what to do with that total debt ratio when, in fact, they should just ignore it. It's not needed for this problem. And if you work the problem in the way that I'm telling you to, you won't get tripped up by unnecessary information. So start here and then work your way back, looking through the things you have to find the things you need. So here we have the same problem, only now we're being asked for the SGR. SGR stands for Sustainable Growth Rate. And this is the rate at which you could grow the company on internal equity only plus enough debt to keep a constant debt to equity ratio. Now, how does this work? Well, think about if we had a dollar in retained earnings. If we had a debt to equity ratio of one, meaning the company was half debt and half equity, it would mean that we would need an extra dollar of debt for every dollar of equity that we added to the firm. And so in that case, for every dollar of internally generated equity, we could actually add $2 worth of assets because we would borrow $1, and therefore we are adding $1 of equity and $1 of debt with every dollar of equity that we retain from our earnings. And so the sustainable growth rate, if there's any debt in the capital structure at all, is going to be higher than the internal growth rate. What is the formula for SGR? You may recognize this formula from previously. It looks just like the formula for IGR, only instead of ROA, we're doing ROE. And so let's go back through and see about the information that we have and what we need, because we always start with this question. What are we looking for? Well, we already know that B is 1 minus 0 0.20 is 0 0.8. That hasn't changed any. And so all we need to do is figure out ROE. Well, ROE, typically we would say, is net income over total equity. But once again, neither of those pieces of information have been given to us. But we do have some other information. We can use the DuPont identity. We've been given this piece of information, and we've been given this piece of information. So all we need is the equity multiplier. Well, the equity multiplier is total assets over total equity. And so we're going to need some information about the firm's capital structure. And the only piece of information that I see about the firm's capital structure is right here. Total debt ratio of 0 0.375. And the total debt ratio is TD over TA. 
And so what we need to figure out is we need to get to TA over TE. Well, we can know, we know that total assets is equal to total debt plus total equity. And we can divide each of those pieces by total assets. And this thing cancels and becomes one. Now, we can say that total equity over total assets is equal to 1 minus total debt over total assets. And so total equity over total assets is equal to 1 minus 0 0.375. And so that is equal to 0 0.625. Now, we're not quite there because we're looking for total assets over total equity, and we've, been, we've figured out total equity over total assets, but it's easy enough to just take the inverse and now we know. So, we can go ahead and say that ROE is equal to the profit margin which is 6.5 percent, 0 0.065, multiplied by the total asset turnover of 2.5, multiplied by the equity multiplier, which is just 1 divided by 0 0.625. So we get out our calculator, and we say 0 0.065 times 2.5 divided by 0.625, and that gives us 26%, but of course we leave it as a decimal. Now we can go ahead, because we have all the pieces of the puzzle, we know that B is 0.8, and we know that ROE is 0.26, we can say that SGR is equal to ROE 0 0.26 multiplied by B 0 0.8 divided by 1 minus 0 0.26 times 0 0.8. Now let's talk about how we're going to do this in the calculator. I'm going to say times 0.8 equals. And so that takes care of this part right here. And I'm going to store 1. I hit STO, S-T-O, and 1. And then I'm going to say divide by, open parentheses, 1 minus, recall 1, close parentheses, equals. And so our SGR would be 26.26%. Okay, let's walk through this one more time. What did we do? We always start with the question. We write down the formula for the thing that we're looking for. And then we start searching for the things in the problem that will give us the information that we need to get these things. Sometimes we're really lucky. Sometimes they might just give us ROE and the plowback ratio, but most of the time it will be more difficult than that. Most common mistake with problems like this, students will use the dividend payout ratio in place of the retention ratio. And sadly, that is probably going to be one of the multiple choice answers we call it a close distractor. And so you'll see that, and you'll select it, and you'll be wrong. If they don't give us the information, maybe we get lucky, and they give us the pieces to do the simple formula. But more often than not, we are going to wind up having to go two or three layers deep on each of these things in order to find the answer. But keep in mind, if it was easy, everyone would do it. And if everyone could do it, then it wouldn't pay more than other jobs to be able to do this kind of work.